Bum ba bum! Welcome back to the Popper Metagame! That's right, I'm already doing another episode because I have time this week. My time's very random. Uh, as I've mentioned before, I've got a regular full time job, a family. I juggle some other side projects and whatnot, so it's just really random. But I got to thinking about it. Uh, someone left a note in the comments about how they thought this uh, video about a potential proposal for a sort of a unified popper ban list might be interesting, and I realized I could probably knock this out in a singular video. So for that reason, I did a little digging, and yeah, I think we can do this. So let's dive right in. First of all, let me explain why there's an issue in the first place. If you go back into the dawn of, of uh, Magic Online, uh, Magic Online, when it came about, Paper Magic had already been around for a while, and Magic Online was behind the paper world for a very long time in terms of trying to catch up with getting all the Magic cards integrated and programmed so that you could use uh, all the Magic cards online that you might play with in paper. And what Magic Online did is it programmed in most of the Magic sets into Magic Online the same way they exist in paper as full complete sets. But somewhere, I don't know, somewhere in this process, I'm trying to remember when the first Magic Online specific master sets came about. This would have been back around 2010-ish, somewhere in there. There's a series of masters sets online that uh, only exist online. Um, most of you are probably already aware of this, but uh, just be, you know, for those of you who aren't, just be aware that there were special master sets that were released online that were not released in paper that were designed to sort of you know, jumble up a lot of the original magic sets and get them all online, all the relevant cards that needed to be there. So, uh, how can you tell where there's where things start to get weird? Uh, if you go onto Magic Online, also this is handy. If you maybe you kind of already already have a sense of this, but if you ever forget and you just want to take a quick look to try to remember, um, you know how to sort how to parse and sort all of this out. If you go back into Legacy, uh, looking at, let's see here, Legacy, uh, when, you look at, when you look at these sets, you'll see these sets all exist the same online and in paper, going all the way back. But when you get before Mirage, when you go back to Alliances, and let's see if we can, sorry, this is going to be off screen, but once you get back to Alliances is when you start to actually have problems. So, uh, the, the, basically there's not really any major issues until you get back to alliances. So we're dealing with a handful of sets. These are the sets where you can see some divergence. Alliances, Homelands, Ice Age, Fallen Empires, The Dark, Legends, Antiquities, Arabian Nights, and of course Alpha and Beta, which I'm going to count as one set. So it, we have we have these uh, nine particular sets that are somewhat divergent, not completely divergent. But what happened with these sets because they were put into master sets much later, wizards tinkered a little bit with the rarities, deciding that certain cards made more sense at uncommon instead of common, and so this created a situation where some cards that would be legal in paper were not legal online. Uh, again, most of you already know this, but by way of background, one famous example is probably Sinkhole, which uh, was printed not at Common Online. I think it's printed at maybe Rare Online, uh, but it's actually uh, in uh, Beta was a Common. So you'll find people who follow a strict uh, popper legality standard of if it's legal at Common, it's legal in paper that would view Sinkhole as a legitimate card to play. But if you're dealing with people that are used to playing in the online metagame, uh, they they might take issue with Sinkhole being a legal card in Popper. So this is where we start to see a bit of a problem where if someone's going to create a sort of a unified legality list, they have to, f they have to figure out some way or some method of merging a global ban list and a global legal list of cards for Popper in paper. So anyway, uh, the next question is what methodology am I going to use to try to do this? So 
I think the the goal would be to try to simplify things. We don't want to have extraordinarily long lists. We want to have a, a simple rule and then we want to have a, a reasonably sized list of exceptions to the rule. So the baseline rule is fairly simple. You can probably guess if it's legal at common you can play it. That would be the rule. So we're creating a paper format for Popper where if it's legal at common you can play it. But there is an exception and that is the ban list. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the Magic Online ban list because these are cards that have been tested and proven to be problematic. So we have a list of 10 cards. Cloud of Fairies, Cloud Post, Cranial Plating, Empty the Warrens, Frantic Search, Grape Shot, Invigorate, Peregrine Drake, Temporal Fisher, and Treasure Cruise. Most people tend to agree that these cards are problematic and don't have a problem with these cards being banned. Now the next question is how do we decide what additional cards to add to the ban list? And here would be my proposal. I think starting out we take a very conservative approach. We edge on the side of caution and we ban a lot of cards that probably don't need to be banned. Why? Because the Magic Online Popper format has been extensively tested. It's been extensively played. It's sort of gone through the, the fires of testing and we know it's a reasonable metagame. So we don't want to break anything right out the gate. So if we ban cards that are at a power level that they could maybe possibly do something just to hedge our bets, we'll probably get a paper format that reasonably resembles the Magic Online format. And if that happens, we know even though it may have problems, even though there's room for improvement, we won't be introducing thousands of new players to Popper for the first time, people who never played online who would now be jumping into paper. They won't get into a completely broken format that has problems and issues because, you know, the, the proper precautions weren't taken. After that, cards could, over the course of time, be removed from the ban list and tried out. So, here we go. This is where things get a little spicy. We're looking at extra cards we're going to add to the ban list. So first I want to start out with, there's a Tolarian Community College video going back to 2015. And by the way, all this stuff that I have in my notepad, my notes, I'm going to put all in the show notes. So you're going to be able to get the, you know, access, you know, quick access to the ban list here. Down at the bottom of my notes, I have a link to the official uh, ban list page for Wizards, so you can find stuff there. And here is going to be a, a link you can pull up to watch this Tolarian Community College video from 2015, where Tolarian Community College recommended five additional cards to be added to a paper ban list. And I don't know if this is all really necessary. For example, Sinkhole and Hymn to Torok and Goblin Grenade. These are cards that might end up being just fine, being legal. But I do like the idea of hedging our bets and just starting out cautious and trying to get rid of cards that would see a fair bit of play that haven't really been tested out much online. Because again, we could always make these legal later. So Goblin Grenade, High Tide, Hymn to Torok, Merchant Scroll, and Sinkhole. These are going to be our banned cards 11 through 15. Now we're going to get to my suggestions. And I add another 15 cards to the ban list. Again, keep in mind this isn't necessarily because these cards are too powerful per se. I would imagine there's a reasonable chance that nearly all of these would eventually become legal. But by banning these additional cards, we would keep the format and paper reasonably comparable to what we see online. There are a lot of other commons that are interesting and nuanced that would become legal that we haven't seen online in, as legal. But these are not the kind of cards outside of this ban list that I'm proposing that would do much. It's just a bunch of new janky cards you can tinker with, and you're not really going to ban. You're not going to break the format with them, and and even a lot of these cards I have in my additions to the ban list as a proposal wouldn't really break anything either. So anyway, let's go ahead and jump right in. Blue Elemental Blast and Red Elemental Blast. We already have Pyroblast and Hydroblast, so being able to add these additional cards, and I'll just go ahead and pull up Blue Elemental Blast. Uh, you, most of you are probably familiar with these cards, but just in case, just in case you're not, here's Blue Elemental Blast. It's a singular blue. It's an instant. Counters a red spell or destroys a red card in play. So basically, this would this would double up on the 
and the, and the red elemental blast does basically the same thing. This would double up on the available playsets of uh, pyroblast and hydroblast. I think being able to have eight blue hate cards or eight red hate cards in your sideboard feels a little excessive. And who knows, maybe over the course of time, this is just fine. Uh, maybe having access to more of these kind of hate cards is just just isn't a big deal. But again, just starting out, this would definitely have a large impact on the metagame. To just dodge that while we're getting going, we would drop that. Next up is Desert. I think the control decks are already plenty strong, and we do not want to add Desert in the mix. Desert let, is just the land you can tap for a colorless, or you can tap to do one damage to an attacking creature after it deals combat damage. So if you have two deserts in play, you could just basically annihilate any 2-2 two -two that's attacking you. Any 1-1s one or any 2-2s, two and that is a huge number of creatures. Add to that, when you look at desert, it says one damage to an attacking creature. It doesn't make any um, exception for flying, which is really important because you would thematically feel like, oh, okay, a desert attacking creatures get buried in the sands or whatever, and you would think like, oh, the flying creatures fly over the desert. No, that's not how it works. <laughs> the, the desert would just also take out flyers, which, hey, you, you might actually think, hey, maybe this is a good thing. Maybe this would just wreck a lot of these fairy delver decks. And you know what? Maybe over the long run, letting desert be legal would be a good thing. But again, we're just taking a conservative approach. We don't want things to be too different in paper from online at the get-go. So in the beginning, we would let it be banned. Next up, Unstable Mutation. Now, I don't know that this really needs to be banned, but uh, blue is certainly already good enough. I don't know if we really need to give it any more special fancy tools. It's uh, one mana enchant creature gives the creature plus three plus three and during each upkeep during each of your upkeep phases you put a minus one minus one counter on that creature now this is not until end of turn those are permanent counters so after three turns you're going to negate the effect that unstable mutation had but given that there's a you know some blue tempo decks out there it certainly feels like we don't need to give blue any more of these kind of tools right now maybe eventually we could say sure no big deal Guerrilla Tactics is another card that I think could be problematic. It is a two mana uh, burn spell that allows you to deal two damage at instant speed to a creature player. But if your opponent causes you to discard it, then you can play it for free and deal four damage to a creature player. So it's a little bit of sideboard tech against discard. And I don't think the discard is so strong that we really need to introduce this kind of stuff. Um, and it probably would be fine in the format. It probably wouldn't really change that much. But for the time being, again, just hedging on the side of caution. This is another one of those cards, Mystic Remora, that's probably in all actuality just fine. It's a one blue enchantment, cumulative upkeep one. And for those of you, for those of you who uh, aren't familiar with cumulative upkeep, it means that uh, every upkeep phase you have to pay uh, one additional mana beyond what you paid the previous upkeep phase. So. You, the first time you roll around to your upkeep with Mystic Remora out, you pay one mana. The next turn you have to pay two mana. The next turn you have to pay three mana to keep Mystic Remora. If you don't pay that continuously growing upkeep cost, then you have to move Mystic Remora to your graveyard and basically sacrifice it. And what it says is whenever a target opponent successfully casts a non-creature spell, you may draw a card. So this feels weird. It's probably not going to do anything, but again, at this point, while I don't think that we have to panic and scream and shout that, that we've got to ban blue cards right now, I also don't think blue needs any more tools. It is obviously the best color in Popper right now, so I feel perfectly fine hedging on the side of caution and banning Mystic Remora. We've also got Active Volcano and Flash Flood, which are the more of the cycle of hosers red fighting against blue singular red instant for active volcano destroy target blue permanent or return target island to owner's hand enchantments on target land are destroyed flash flood is the blue version that basically does the same thing except it's a blue card hating on red cards and this just again feels excessive so we'll drop it now these next ones are, are really, really cards that uh, most uh, generally I think would be fine, but again, just being super cautious. Avoid Fate might see some play. That's about as much as I'll say. 
Now at first I thought maybe this wouldn't even be a big deal because you can use a void fate to protect your creatures against removal and that seems just fine. Right now green could use some extra tools, why not? But I got to thinking about a void fate. It's a singular green instant that says counter target instant or enchantment can only counter spells that target a permanent under your control. Now the problem with Avoid Fate is I don't actually think any kind of green aggro decks would use it. You've already got access to things like Vines of Vastwood to protect your own creatures and things that could be interesting and, and more powerful to give your creatures Shroud but also give them a power boost at the same time even beyond Vines of Vastwood. So who would actually use Avoid Fate? I don't know, maybe like Tron decks when you go to blow up one of their lands they say no. And uh, I don't think Tron needs any help right now. So while Avoid Fate's not really going to be breaking it, I don't even know if it's see play. Again, just to be super cautious, we're going to go ahead and get rid of it. Now, a card that I do think would see play, and actually I think would be fine and would lead to maybe a new interesting deck archetype, is Guy's Touch. It's two green, an enchantment. You may put one additional land in play during each of your turns, but that land must be a basic forest. you got to love how these old cards are templated. You may sacrifice Guy's Touch to add green green to your mana pool. This ability is played as an interrupt. So basically this is Exploration. Let's just pull up Explore. It's, it's a worse version of Exploration. But anyway, so this is basically Exploration at common, but worse. So Exploration costs a single green. It's an enchantment. You can play an additional land on each of your turns. Guy's Touch costs twice the mana, but it's still only two. This is doable and allows you to play an extra land every turn but only only a forest basically so you can't play anything else so this would be a powered down version of exploration and I think it would be fine who knows there might be some kind of um, crazy ramp decks that would be too good but um, I would love to see this be legal eventually but for the time being just to be safe because it would create some new things we'd go ahead and ban it and then ashes to ashes this is a three mana sorcery. Remove two non-artifact creatures from the game and deal five damage to yourself. So Ashes to Ashes is probably too janky to actually work out. I mean, dealing five damage to yourself is a lot of damage. And there's no Death Shadow in Popper, so this is not really doing it. But this is an exile effect. It's not just destroy. It does allow you to get an automatic two for one. So I do have some concerns about this card, particularly in you know black white decks something like uh, pestilence decks that already have access to life gain to make up for the life loss and the fact that this is exiling is is not trivial because this deals with undying creatures and some other situations where just destroying wouldn't be as strong so it's it's two for wanting it's exiling this might be a card that is ultimately fine but at least just to start out we'd go ahead and we would ban it next up we've got Save an Elves from the dark. One mana, one one, two green tap, and target enchant land is destroyed. This is interesting because uh, it'd probably be fine. Again, this is a card I think ultimately probably should be legal, but I can imagine uh, you know some kind of you know I don't even know to be honest with you. It's probably just complete jank that wouldn't work, but. It, someone might figure out uh, some kind of a rampy enchantment deck where you ramp up putting enchantments on your lands and then suddenly you're able to use your your uh, wild growths as uh, stone rains once you have your saven elves out and who knows this might lead to some some different decks out there that might trip people up and just be a little too weird too soon too fast ultimately I think it's perfectly fine but again we're, we're being super cautious here next up is darkness. This is a black fog effect that apparently I can't seem to find on uh, MTG Goldfish. So, all right, not not finding it. Let's just let's try Scryfall real quick. I'm probably just goofing something up here, but okay. Darkness prevent all combat damage would that would be dealt this turn. So. Eh, maybe it's fine, but I don't want to give black access to fog right now. Uh, Equinox is another card that's probably fine in the long run. Um, but it says it's a one mana 
enchantment that says counter target spell if it would destroy a land you control again this is something that Tron could use to protect itself against sideboard land kill and eh, I don't like that maybe eventually but uh, not immediately already talked about flash flood last card to talk about is remove enchantments which I think is probably just fine but again early on prizes how in the world did that happen copy troll V okay remove enchantments blah 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 this this last part this last part's what we care about um, destroy all other enchantments you control all other auras attached to permanents you control and all other auras attached to attacking creatures your opponents control so you gotta go through this mountain of text but what you find is this is a one mana instant that lets you destroy all your opponents auras it's gonna blow up uh, it's gonna cause problems for you if you have a lot of enchantments but let's say you run zero enchantments in your deck uh, it just basically becomes a one mana instant that lets you totally wreck the Boggles deck, which might not be a bad thing, but it would drastically alter the metagame and the format right out the gate. And again, we're trying to avoid that, so we don't want to neuter Boggles just yet. We'll kind of hold off on that. And that's it. So we have our baseline 10 card ban list that already exists now. We've got another five cards that Tularean Community College recommends that I actually agree with, at least starting out. And then we've got an additional 15 cards that I would add for a total of 30 cards. All right, part two, the addendum list. Uncommon but legal, or the Eternal Masters 25. So what are we talking about? Well, I talked a little bit earlier about master sets that were only released on Magic Online, but not released in paper one of those particular sets is Eternal Masters and in that particular set we saw something interesting what happened was there were a bunch of cards and paper that existed uncommon and previously on Magic Online had only existed at uncommon and we saw a boatload of these cards um, down downshifted to common now this has happened in other situations as well for instance, in Iconic Masters, there were some cards that got downshifted to common, but that set was also printed in paper. So all of the cards in Iconic Masters that got downshifted down, you can find those particular common cards in paper. But since Eternal Masters was only printed online, I mean, not really printed, but created online, uh, you get this weird scenario where you have these particular 25 cards that are legal and pauper on Magic Online because they exist at Common on Magic Online, but there are these cards do not exist at Common in paper. So just to keep the format uniform, I would propose adding these 25 cards to the legal list, even though they're not Common, they would be explicitly made legal, sort of the opposite of a ban list. So there would be sort of an addendum list that says it would go with the ban list and it would say, look these cards are uncommons but they specifically are legal and this would just be to keep uniformity with magic online to a large extent and what I've done is I've, I've broken this list down a little bit further and if you wanted to simplify this to keep things from being too complex even though there's 25 cards a lot of these cards see just a very very little play uh, for example Arrogant Worm and Skirk Drill Sergeant maybe just see a, a little bit of fringe fringe play, maybe Goblin General. Um, some of these other cards would certainly be interesting, but generally they see just very little play. Also, Brindle Show sees a smidge of play, and Beetle Bag Chief has seen a smidge of play also. But what we really have are the big five. If these disappeared, it would drastically warp things. And you could maybe argue that you could even extend it to the big seven. But starting out, the, the undisputable five cards that really matter are Battle Screech, Circular Logic, Chainer's Edict, Tangle, Ele and Elephant Guide. Now, I actually think what Wizards sh could do to sort of simplify this issue is at the same time that they announce that they're bringing Popper to paper as far as making it offic an officially sanctioned format, they release... Uh, a, a product 
something akin to the commander decks that get released and within that special product they actually uh, put together a few uh, popper decks that you can play right out of the box they're probably not quite as good as regular popper decks or they could be whatever that part doesn't really matter but what they what they could do is they could add these 25 cards to those deck lists at common and I think these car I think those deck lists would sell good just because players would want to get access to these five cards mostly Battle Screech, Circular Logic, Chainers, Edict, Tangle, and Elephant Guide. Elephant Guide is not particularly pricey in paper but the other four cards Battle Screech, Circular Logic, Chainers, Edict, and Tangle I think these cards are all over five dollars a copy so Wizards could make some money while also simplifying things and if Wizards was to do something like that they would automatically solve this particular problem where uh, they could just add all or most of these cards in at common in some kind of a standalone product to the paper world and then they wouldn't have to worry about any kind of a weird addendum list or anything like that we would just have a ban list with 30 cards I think that would be the most elegant way to do it but if wizards didn't want to bother with that kind of a product then we could sort of get by in the meantime by just having an addendum list where you have these 25 cards that are legal even though they're uncommons Moving along, that gives us in total uh, 30 banned cards, which again, if we could get a supplemental product to take care of the other 25 cards, we're just done at that point. But if we need to have an addendum list, then we have 55 sort of unique cards to keep track of that modify the format. If we compare this to Modern, Modern has 33 banned cards. So we're basically talking about the same type of a situation. Legacy has 54 banned cards, there's also 9 additional anti-cards that are banned, and 25 additional conspiracy cards that are banned. For a total of 87 cards you have to remember to track. And since Popper is an eternal format that stretches all the way back as far as Legacy, I think the fact that Popper would basically just have 55 total cards to track in a unique way outside of the rules of the format otherwise, that's not too bad. Again, we could even just get down to potentially a 30 card ban list, which is perfectly reasonable and in line with other formats. Some people might even joke that the 30 card ban list in Popper wouldn't be too dissimilar from the length of the ban list in Standard as of late, but we won't go there. All right, uh, next up, uh, I've got a, a, a link to the official uh, ban list that will be put into the show notes so you can sort of peruse that and make of that what you will. And that basically does it. So, you know, just to just to recap, the whole goal of this is just to try to reconcile the problems of having uh, really just some of these differences that exist between Magic Online and Paper. The Magic Online Popper uh, formats and leagues and tournaments have been played extensively. We know that the metagame that's been cultivated online is safe, maybe not optimal, but it's safe. It's safe to introduce to the masses. So we don't want to stray too far from that. But we don't want to make things too complicated either. So this has been my attempt to sort of accomplish those two goals by having a 30 card ban list and a 25 card supplemental list of cards that would be considered legal. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you think that I've overlooked a card, if you think there's a particular card that exists at common in paper that does not exist at common online that would be broken and would necessarily need to be added to the popper ban list then leave a note in the comments however i don't think that's what most people are going to say because the extra stuff you're going to you know dig around and find you know once you find a card that is accessible in paper at common but not accessible online at common, I don't think you're going to go, aha, this is a card that's going to break popper. I think you're going to go, wow, this card is super janky, and there's no way anybody's going to break this. It's just not going to happen. So I think what's more likely is that people will say, look, uh, you know what? You've, they're, they're going to say Birdman. By the way, I haven't mentioned my name here lately, referring to myself in the third person. Uh, Birdman or MSP, whatever you want to call me. You're gonna be like Birdman. This is just, oh, this is just, this is, this is some jank. You need to take those saving elves. We shouldn't even be proposing that. Like th those are doing nothing. Avoid fate. Come on, man. But again, keep in mind. I think 30 cards is a reasonable 
uh, length of a list. I just didn't want to have like some 300 card extensive ban list to precisely make Magic Online and Paper match exactly by banning all of the cards that exist at Common and Paper that don't exist at Common Online. Because a lot of those cards are just completely irrelevant and never going to do anything. And I think that having cards that, yeah, they're probably crap, but they could they could interfere with things. We'll just start out having them banned, and after the format's been going for a while, we can slowly take some of these cards off, take off Avoid Fate. Also, if Wizards were, were to employ someone like Lewis Scott Vargas, who's familiar with Popper, uh, a really, you know, high-level pro player, to peruse and come up with his own sort of a proposed initial starting ban list, and you know he looked at it and said ah, I think Equinox is fine I think darkness is fine I think saving elves is fine I could respect something like that and this list could get further called down to maybe only five or six additional cards and maybe popper ends up having something like a 20 card ban list right out the gate and I think that would be perfectly fine as well the point is a lot of these people who say Oh man, it's oh, it'd just be so difficult to create a sanctioned popper format because you just have to reconcile and it's so complicated and bloody bloody. No, it it really doesn't have to be. Um, you can have, you know, something as simple as probably a 20 to 30 card ban list and a new supplemental product by Wizards, and boom, we're off to the races, and we have a new super awesome format that tons of people would play and enjoy. So. That's pretty much it for today. I do suggest, by the way, j just so you all know, I know that there's a lot of people out there who, who really love the, the professor and the Tularean Community College, and they get really mad at anybody who would criticize him. I know there's other people who really don't like the professor and the Tularean Community College, and you know they, they don't like anybody who says anything nice about him. I don't really fall anywhere in there. I just I, I appreciate what the professor has done in terms of promoting Popper. I think everyone's human, no one's infallible, no one is above reproach or criticism, but I also appreciate what he's been doing, so I just don't take a hard line either way. Having said that, I highly recommend his particular video that I've linked in the notes. Check it out. I think he he puts together a pretty cool video just breaking down, uh, and it's kind of also cool to look back and see a video that's several years old that I think is in, in a lot of ways still relevant today in terms of his recommendations on these additional five cards and sort of being an early mover and in, in trying to create some sort of a concept for a unified ban list to connect between online and, and paper. Um, yeah, I guess uh, in conclusion, I probably shouldn't refer to it as a unified ban list uh, because uh, the Magic Online list ban list is still um, going to just be 10 cards. Uh, but the idea is that these extra cards that we're banning in paper they're also already banned online because they're uh, at uncommon online. So in that way, it sort of is unified. It, it's, but yeah, I digress. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thank you so much for everybody out there who just takes the time to leave a comment or watch a video or subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy my random offbeat analysis of Popper and my love for the format and all of these things, then you know feel free to share the channel whatever whatever once we get to 150 subscribers i'd like to do an open q a which i don't think is going to be too extensive but the cool part is because we only have 150 subscribers at that point you can be pretty confident that the question that you ask is going to get answered and not just in short shrift i mean i'm guessing with 150 subscribers that would be what like if 10 percent asked a question that would be 15 questions i tend to uh, go on and on and do these you know 30 plus minute videos that uh, probably wouldn't be great for monetization because less is more but hey I don't really care about getting monetized so that just means that if you ask a question I'm probably going to spend several minutes diving deep trying to answer your question to the very fullest so uh, I'm mentioning this now even though it might still be months away from getting to 150 subscribers so that you can start thinking about maybe there's a particular question that occurs to you one day you might make yourself a mental note 
that when the time comes, you'll be ready to drop that question on me. And of course, that doesn't mean you can't ask questions otherwise. If, if something comes to mind that's uh, more or less relevant to a video I'm already posting, feel free to jump in the comments, leave a question. I do miss things from time to time because I get so busy, but I do try to answer those questions and respond to requests for videos and content and such. So whatever it is, I really, really like Popper and I enjoyed doing this. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, whether you're playing physical paper popper at your local game shop or you're grinding the leagues online, I hope you have tremendous success and win your next five matches. Peace!